Hello and welcome to a very full basement. So if you're following the basement on Instagram or Facebook, you might have noticed lately we have been getting a lot of new arrivals into the basement uh, as exhibited by what's on the table here in front of me, lots of new stuff. And I thought it might be fun if we could have a look at all these things together instead of me doing it off camera as I normally do. Um, I've already opened everything, so there's no unboxing as it were, but there's plenty of them on YouTube if you wanna have a look at unboxing videos. But we're gonna go through and look at every single item and just have a look what state is it in, is, does it even work, what even is it, um, what, what might we do with it here in the basement and try and get an idea of how it's gonna earn its place. So let me clear the desk and we'll look at each item one by one. Okay, so let's start with the least interesting of the collection, all the books and documents um, and even a little bit of software. So what's this? Mac work, Mac play, practical, inventive and loads of fun. Uh, listen to this, report writing using MacWrite, letterhead design using MacPaint, and a net worth statement using Microsoft Multiplan. Doesn't sound like loads of fun, but um, perhaps to this guy, it does sound like loads of fun. So thanks, Lon Paul. Um, some bedtime reading there. What else have we got? Super Paint. Ah, an image, write, image writer user's manual for the Apple Image Writer. That's quite nice. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on one of these printers. That'd be awesome. Don't have one, unfortunately. Uh, Mac Write. So this is the manual for the Mac Write software, which was a word processing software. Um, I think, yeah, I've got the box for it here. So let's see what's in that. Your Apple tour of the Macintosh Plus. That's not um, Mac Write. Microsoft Word for Windows. Uh, that doesn't seem to be in the right box. This is all Word for Windows. Still, that might come in handy if I want Word for Windows. Um, but we seem to be missing some disks. We've got disk one, five, six, and seven. Put them aside. Microsoft Word for Windows. Irrelevant for us. So we've got the Macintosh Quick Reference Card. Macintosh using the International Control Panel. <laughs> it's got Australia up there. They must have put this in the Australian stuff so we could localize our Macs. Open me third. Oh, now I'm... Oh, look at this. <gasps> Jackpot. Original rainbow apple stickers. Oh, I'm going to love these. I probably won't stick them on anything because I'll be too nervous about wasting them. Um, put them back in there. Oh, what a treasure. That's cool. What a cool find. Thanks for choosing Macintosh. No worries. A survey. Apple wanted to find out what we thought. They wanted some feedback and just some random other paper. Well, that's interesting. So that's in the box. Let's put that aside. Understanding Apple products. And look at this. It's got a handy reference of all of the Mac models. Huh. How cool is this? So from the 128K down to the Centra 650, PowerBook 160, and it's got the processor, the speed, SIM slots. Oh, someone's gone to a lot of effort to map it all out. That's quite. Oh, that might be quite a good reference, actually. I'll look at that a bit closer later. What else have we got here? Just the facts, please. Apple printers, Apple monitors, all of the info. No, no more stickers, no. Upgrading and repairing PCs. That is a big book and one I'll never read. Macintosh revealed. Programming with the toolbox. Um, another great big book about programming. I'm never going to read it. Maybe somebody wants it. I could give that away to someone if they want that. Basic Microsoft Basic for the Macintosh. Basic Basic. Excellent. Always need a book on basic, basic. And, ah, volume two, volume one. Look at that. Programming. I love it. Service guide, Macintosh computers. Service guide, volume one. 
service guide volume 2 and a per peripheral interface guide why is that such a hard word to say peripheral this is going to be a handy resource when I get some of the older computers we can start using that to pull it apart we've got uh, Dreamweaver and Photoshop 6 oh look Macintosh troubleshooting that obviously goes with these manuals so we've got a complete package to troubleshoot and service any of the older Macs well that's all the documentation now let's start looking at the fun stuff okay so the first computer we're going to have a look at is this awesome power mac g4 and a matching studio display both in excellent condition i'm really happy um, i went to see a guy about an unrelated uh, item and i spied in his shed these little beauties poking out from underneath a table and i said uh, are they for sale and he said well they can be and so I brought them home and uh, I'm so glad I did it's it's just in great condition um, you can see the I mean what else can you say it's just it's a little bit dusty but I can clean that up I love the way these things open look at that just so easy to get to Apple why don't you do this again it's just it's a masterpiece um, but what we'll do is I'm not sure if it works I'm not sure if the screen works or if the computer works. I, there is evidence of some modifications inside. Um, so let's, I'll move the camera, we'll have a closer look and we'll have a look around inside and then we'll plug it in, power it on and see what happens. Let's go. So let's open it again. And you can see inside. So we've got the G4 processor. Uh, I think it's a 733 giga, uh, megahertz, sorry, on that one. It's got three sticks of RAM, so all of the slots are fully populated. Now this model uh, says on the back here that it's a 256 meg uh, model, so obviously this, it's had some sort of upgrade. This is the video card, I think it's a TNT2. It's missing its Airport Express, um, or Airport Extreme, sorry. So we might be fine, fun to try and find one of those to give this some Wi-Fi. It's got a modem card in it. Now there's something pretty crazy going on here which you can't see. Let me lift it up. Check that out. So there is a power supply modification on this machine. And what I'm assuming is a 12 volt power supply has been <laughs> plumbed in out of the back of the original power supply. You can see this black cable goes down to power this transformer which then goes to these black and white leads that run into the motherboard so um, obviously something wrong with the power supply I'm not sure what I'm not sure if it works we'll put it back together we'll plug it in and we'll see what we get uh, just while I'm in here I mentioned it's got an 80 gig hard drive it's got a DVD I think that's a DVD burner and it's got a zip drive as well which is a nice little addition to share files between Macs those zip drives are quite handy so let's close it up I love that design and we've got our one plug from the Apple Studio display. There's no power cable, so I assume that this one plug does it all. We'll plug it into the back, um, and I'll find a keyboard and a mouse, and then we will fire it up and see what happens. Great, so I've found a mouse and keyboard. I've plugged everything in, given it power. We'll turn it on and see what happens. Chime that's a good sign and uh, hopefully this screen works I love the design of these things just that see-through uh, perspex acrylic sort of plastic uh, great let's come on that's a good sign that uh, hopefully we're gonna have a good result we can see the little loady thing fans a bit noisy but that's the power supply I don't know if that's because of the weird modification or not or the always this noisy I haven't owned one of these specific machines before Great, and there we have it. We're in the desktop, so our computer's clock is set wrong. Let's go have a look at about my Mac. And 10.4.11, which is the version I would put on, and, and if you watched my eMac video, you saw I upgraded to 10.4.11 on that. Um, it's the best version, I believe, for these older PowerPC machines, because it can still run OS 9 apps as well. Uh, once you get to 10.5, there's no more OS 9 support. 
Um, but what have we got? Uh, we've got one gig of RAM, which is great. So they've maxed out the RAM slots and we've got plenty of RAM there. Let me just zoom in and I want to show you something quite interesting. So here we've got 10.4 Fox and that's only something you would put on. Oh, what happened there? It just turned itself off. Okay, I've just discovered something new. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little f light here and um, and a power a power sign and it's a touch sensitive power button for the whole system. So I've just shut it down. I'll wait for it to boot up and I'll show you what I was about to show you. So like I was saying before I accidentally turned the machine off, it's got 10.4 Fox. Now 10.4 Fox is something that, that you would install on these older Macs. It's a web browser that's compliant with most of the modern web and it runs off sort of a variant of Firefox. If you just use Safari on these, Safari of, of this era isn't really designed or doesn't have the encryption that it needs to be able to decrypt all the modern websites. Most of the web now is encrypted for our security, supposedly. Um, so you need a, a browser like Oh, I've done it again, I've turned it off. You need a browser like 10.4 Fox to browse the web. It's interesting that it's on this machine. It looks like it's just set up uh, as a collector would. It's something I would do. I would do a fresh install of 10.4.11, put 10.4 Fox on it, and then um, from there it's like a good base to do anything else. So that's already been done for us. That's a great win. It's a great machine. I'm really happy with this one. Uh, it's just in such good cosmetic condition and I'm really pleased. We'll certainly find a good project for this in the basement. Right, so I wasn't joking before when I said uh, we're running out of room in the basement. So I'm just finding random places on the shelf behind me to, to put this stuff um, <laughs> as we look at it. So the next uh, thing we're going to look at on the list is this PowerBook 2400C180. Now what is that you might ask? Well, the PowerBook 2400C was released in 97 and it's a small, like it's a super portable kind of like the MacBook Air of its day, I guess. Um, it's pretty light and uh, it's just a, a portable computer. Uh, it has the power PC processor in it. This is a 180, so it has a 180 gigahertz processor. I think they have sort of a, a one and a half or thereabouts gigabyte hard drive in them. Now worryingly, this one has had signs that someone's been into it. So if we focus, there we go. I don't know if you can see along there, it's sort of and on this side, um, it looks like a gorilla's been trying to get in there. It's all kind of rough. Someone's been wedging something in there. But uh, it was an impulse buy. I was just browsing eBay. It was cheap. There's obvious damage, which I'll show you now when we open it, in that the screen has got the dreaded LCD, um, what do they call that? That's the polarizer. That's what it is. The polarizer starts delaminating from the LCD screen. Something happens with the glue and um, and it gets that kind of look about it. It also smells kind of vinegary, um, which I noticed as soon as I unpack this. Um, but it's a neat little machine other than that. I don't know if it works. We'll give it some power and see. I don't have high hopes given the, the obvious um, damage to the size where someone's been trying to get in um, but it's a lovely machine it's got a little trackpad um, two button mouse and a tiny little keyboard this one's quite unique in that well I guess it's not unique but it's unique for Australia and then it's got a Japanese keyboard I don't know if you can see those little Japanese characters there um, which is a point of interest I suppose so let's give it some power I've got this power supply um, this is off a PowerBook Duo, which I have in the basement, and we're going to do a series on that where I want to upgrade it. You haven't seen it yet, but um, we'll get it out at some stage and have a look at that. Uh, they use the same adapter, thankfully, 24 volt, and it's the large barrel, which also fits on the, where are we, this, this way, it also fits on the iBook G3. So just in case you need to know, because you can never find the power adapters for those things, the hockey puck adapters. So if you've got a duo adapter, which I happen to have, you can use that instead. Right. Uh, did you just hear that? Um, I just connected the power and that is the noise that it made. Let me take that out. Nothing came on the screen. Um, 
let me take the mic off and I'll plug that in again. Uh, okay, that's a weird noise. So I'm not sure what that's about. Um, the lights on on the on the front there. I don't know if you can see that uh, green light. So it's getting power. And if we hit the on button, just nothing, nothing at all. Um, well, I didn't have high hopes for this one. Like I say, it was cheap. It was sold as no power supply untested, which means that they've tested it and it doesn't work. And they're just trying to get as much as they can for it on, uh, on eBay. Um, but we'll have a look at that in another episode we'll open it up and see what's going on inside uh, let's just check the battery um yeah that's all okay it's uh it's a lithium ion battery which is a nice addition probably dead um so yeah that is the powerbook 2400c that'll go in the to fix it pile definitely let's see what's next right so we're going to go back a few more years to 1993 laptops are getting <laughs> a little thicker a little heavier uh, this is a powerbook 145b now the specs on the b are it has the 68030 processor the motorola processor at running at 25 megahertz and either a 40 meg or an 80 megabyte hard drive inside um, this has a built-in floppy drive which the one we looked at just before the 2400 doesn't have um, which is a nice addition um, again this was sold as no power supply untested which means it's not going to work um, of course they've tested it because it would be worth a lot more if it worked <laughs> uh, it's missing the flap at the back i can see that already it's supposed to have a fold down flap and that's not a huge issue but um, it's pretty dirty uh, let's have a look at the battery Come on. Ah, oh, right. Well, it's not swollen. It's, it's got all that dirt and stuff on it, though. That's gross. Um, but it also has a sticker on it, rebuilt by Power Repackers, uh, 3,500 milliamp hours. So it's had a rebuild, which is interesting, but it's also got some nasty corrosion on that terminal there. Um, so maybe we'll leave that battery out of the machine. Don't want it to be doing any damage to the terminals in there. Uh, but I wonder if it'll fire up if we give it some power. Now, the good thing about these older power books is that they just take a standard barrel connector, 7.5, what do they need? 7.5 volts, two amps max. So I have a power supply here, just a generic power supply at 7.5, 1.5 amps max. Before we turn it on, I'll show you the inside again. A little bit dirty. Um, it's got probably the worst polarizer issue of any computer I've ever seen. Now, you might be saying, why are you buying these computers <laughs> with obvious screen damage? Well, I saw this random YouTube video of a guy in Japan fixing a TV with the same issue. And it's just a film that he peeled off the LCD display and he just glued another film on it. So you can buy the film, like you can just buy rolls of that film. So I figure, why not? I can have a go. And um, if the computer works and we can verify it powers on, I can have a go then at replacing the screen. I don't think I'll be able to find an entire screen assembly at a reasonable price to replace it, but you never know. Things pop up from time to time. So let's put, plug the power in and we'll see if it turns on or hopefully it doesn't make a weird screeching noise like the other one did. So power in there, I'll plug it in. Power's on. It's got the on button on the back, so I'll hold that in. Ah, chime. Um. Oh, I heard some noise. I don't know if it was the floppy or if it was the hard drive. There's no more noise. The hard drive should be making some noise and it's not making any noise. I think these had a SCSI hard drive in them, which is very hard to find now. Um, but I do have a SCSI to SD adapter, which 
um, I'm intending to use inside the duo I've got but I may configure it so we can plug it into the back into the SCSI ports on the back of these things and try and boot off that um, I can't see much else happening but I can see the backlight is on on the screen but there's no there's nothing coming up on the screen I'm not sure if we could see it if it did because of this polarizer issue but um, I assumed we could see some sort of thing if it was going to load something anyway it's slightly promising the chime noise is good it might just need a new hard drive and um, maybe some caps replaced I don't know but uh, again one for the fix it pile um, better than I thought it would be actually so yeah it's a bit of a win I suppose it was a, a cheap machine so let's see what we've got next right jump forward a year to 1994 and Apple has released the 500 series of PowerBook uh, this is a 540C which is in great condition and uh, I dare say it is going to work because oh it's got little feet that flick down oh, I love that so neat anyway uh, <laughs> I was browsing Gumtree and this guy in um, Victoria which is a long way from where I live was selling this for crazy money pickup only and I sent him a message saying mate I know you've said pick up only but would you consider shipping it to where I am and he said uh, because you've said it uh, so nicely yeah no worries I'll do that and he turned out to be the nicest guy and he, he, he was essentially just giving this thing away and um, he said it's fully working and just by looking at it you can tell it's been looked after it's in great condition it came with the power supply which is awesome because it is a funny shape it's like a four pin four socket design so I'm glad that it got sent with that because finding one of these would be a nightmare so I'll plug it into the back now on the back it's got uh, the classic Mac flip down panel which all of the laptops had for a long time uh, we've got a SCSI port we've got um, some sort of display port I don't know what that is it kind of looks a bit like HDMI but it's obviously not we've got I think this is a network port we've got um, that also looks like some sort of network interface audio out audio in and modem slash printer there this comes with a floppy drive on the side there and what's neat about these is that they have dual batteries baby packing them either side so <laughs> you can uh, you can dual load this puppy uh, which is cool or um, I think they may have had like other things you could put in them but looking at the size of it I mean what it may be a, a, um, a PCM CIA card reader or something but I don't know what else would fit in there so maybe they just had batteries let's turn it on and fingers crossed we're gonna have a working one out of the three laptops we've looked at so far where's the on button here it is that lovely chime you can hear things whirring so that's a good sign the other ones didn't whir at all so there's a hard drive doing something and we've got pixels I think on the screen yep happy Mac welcome to Macintosh let me zoom in and see what's going on so you can see there it's uh, it's loading what looks to be probably Mac OS 7 maybe um, it's a color screen which is cool uh, I love that about this 540c and it's actually an active matrix screen which makes it a really good quality color screen as far as the screens go of this era of machine um, the cheaper ones had passive matrix which had a lot of ghosting and blurring whenever you, there was any movement on the screen so I'm really pleased with this machine it's actually a really nice addition to the collection here at the basement again I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with it um, it's fully working there's probably not a lot I need to do with it but um, maybe I'll install some classic games on that and and uh, have some fun with it this is one of the first Macs to have a touchpad which is quite an interesting little bit of trivia it's pretty snappy it's got a Motorola 68040 running at um, 33 megahertz so it's running system 7.5 and it's got 12 megabytes of memory um, which is quite a lot which is quite neat so a great little Mac I really love this Mac it's such a nice machine with the color screen and the touchpad actually works really well I know it's tiny but it's really responsive and it, uh, it just tracks really nicely 
and um, which is important because this was the first machine to have a touchpad. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure that this is one of the first laptops to ever carry a touchpad on it. And to have such a good one like this really gave a good user experience. Still only a single button mouse, so option or control click to get the right click, but uh, a great machine. So it's this and the Duo that I have, which you haven't seen yet, are my two favorites at the moment, um, just because they're in such good condition and they're just fully working and just lovely little machines. So a bit of a departure from the topic of old Macs. Now we're having a look at a sampler, a MIDI sampler. It's an Akai S2000. Now this particular unit, I believe it came out of a, a facility that had a ship simulator in it and this was part of that setup so it'd be interesting we're, in a future episode we'll look at seeing if we can get some sound into it and out of it maybe how it works i'll have to google up um, the instruction manual to work out how to run this thing apparently they were quite a well-regarded sampler in their day um, i just love the white look about it the white faceplate i've plugged it in so we'll turn it on and we'll see what happens all right there's something on the screen i'll zoom in and we'll have a look what it says so it's turned on and it just says here insert s2000 system disk and the lights are just uh where are we just here flashing backwards and forwards now thankfully it came with a system disk so here we go akai s2000 system disk version 1.51 including sound data so let's put that in and see what it does okay i can hear the drive spinning up and it's doing something Operating system 1.51, uh, one M word. I don't know what that means. And now it's loading samples, engine one and two and three, turbine. So these are all the noises that would be in the ship simulator, I, I presume. And the controls of the simulator probably had some sort of MIDI output, which would just trigger the sounds in these machines. It seems like a, an overkill of a machine to use just to play back the sounds, but I guess they wanted something that was uh, fail safe and that was repeatable, which these machines certainly are. So that's the Akai S2000. Uh, like I say, we'll have a look at this in a later episode. We'll connect it up to some stuff and see if we can make it, make it uh, get those sounds, the engine noises or whatever is in it. We'll be able to listen to those and maybe put our own sounds in and get them out again and um, see what it can do. So I've got a duo of Titanium PowerBooks as well that have come into the basement. They've both come from different places. They're slightly different models. This is the 667 megahertz model, which was superseded by this one, which is the 8, let me look at my cheat sheet, 867. So 667, 867, early 2002, late 2002. There's not a whole lot else uh, difference. I think these have a slightly better graphics card in them. Now both of these listings had pictures of them working, so I've got sort of high hopes that they're going to, going to go. Um, I know that this one is missing its internal drive. The pictures I saw of it working, it had booted off an external drive. I don't have an external drive right here to um, test it with, uh, but it should boot up to the screen that says can't find a drive. This one here um, by all accounts is working, so let's turn them on and see what happens. Okay, this has chimed and this hasn't chimed. But I can hear the hard drive wearing away. I can't hear anything. Obviously, it doesn't have a hard drive, so it does have fans in it. There's something happening on the screen, which is positive on this one here. And I can see that the light's on. I think that light's on. So nothing at all over here. And we're loading OS 9.2. Now the seller did say it's got a dual install. It's got 9.2 and it's got 10.1, I think, on it as well. Um, so I yeah expected everything as expected. It has a quite a nice case on this one here, but the screen's a little scratched up on the back. I don't know if I can show you that there. You can sort of see it's a little bit dented and, and scratched. Whereas this one here which isn't working has a much nicer screen it's still it's still scratched but not as badly scratched and the hinges and everything still have a lot of their paint on uh, oftentimes you see all the paints come off these hinges which is pretty much happened to this one here it's lost a, a fair bit of paint off off the back of the hinges there if you can see that um, there you go it's booted into 
OS 9.2. I love these machines, just the thin bezels, and I mean, they were just the future when they came out, weren't they? It was just amazing, like, they're just so thin, and, and of course, we're used to that now, uh, but at the time, I mean, these things were a revelation. When you see what came before, like that chunky plastic era, and then these things came along, and everyone was just like, wow, this thing is space age. And they still look pretty good even now. Uh, they're just a great design. You know, it's 20 years old, but but look at it. So this one's working fine. Uh, this one is not doing anything. Um, it's not giving us anything on the screen. So there's some issues there. Not sure what. Um, caps locked working. So it's on. Like it's got power and stuff. It's just maybe the screen's dead. Um, we might swap the screens over in a video and that way it's a good way of testing whether the screen is actually dead or it works um, and if it does work it gives us a nicer screen and hinges for this one that is working so this will be the last thing we look at today this gorgeous little Macintosh SE now I just love these things they're so tiny they're so cute this little tiny little screen here when you see them in a picture or standing alone you don't get an idea of how small they are because they're so sort of in proportion but when you see them uh, next to a person they're tiny and they got of course the carry handle you can carry them around and they came with a bag uh, so you could portable you could take them to the office and take them home um, this model came with a keyboard and a mouse I've plugged them in it also came with an external floppy drive which must have been out of somewhere where it was bolted to a desk because <laughs> it's got this massive stainless steel cable to it on it as well to stop anyone stealing it I suppose um, but we don't really need that because it's got two built-in floppy drives in the machine it's also got a hard drive in it um, the guy who sold it to me said it was working last time he used it whatever that means um, so we'll turn it on and see what happens. It's got a big chunky switch on the back. We'll flick that. No chime, just a beep. And it fires right up. Now there's nothing on the screen yet. That's a bit of a worry. In fact, the screen's totally dead. So um, I just wonder though, is there maybe a dial or something to adjust brightness? Oh, here's a dial. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got some screen. Oh, that's cool. Um, it's got a mouse pointer, but the mouse is not doing anything. Of course, I don't know if this mouse works or not. Okay, it's spitting out these yellow things, which are designed to go in the drives for when it travels. And it's found the hard drive and it's happy. So we've got a little happy Mac there. It's booting off the hard drive, obviously. These are quite nifty things, so I'll put them aside and put them back in for when we want to pick it up and go to the office. Right, so we're at the welcome to Macintosh screen. Hopefully something's happening. Hopefully it's gonna load into an operating system. I'm not entirely convinced that the keyboard and mouse are working. And I can also see that the screen uh, sort of jumps around a bit. It, it looks flickery to you because of the frame rate mismatch from the camera to the screen. It doesn't look flickering to me, but I can see it kind of, it sort of jumps up or down slightly every now and again. Now I did see a video by Action Retro and he's got a Macintosh SE Plus I think and it's uh, the Black Cursed one which he's done a series on and he encountered that issue as well where the screen was sort of jumping around a bit and he fixed it. I forget how he did it but I'll go back and rewatch his video because it, we might need to do the same thing to this machine to try and fix the, uh, the little glitches that it's having. Now. It probably should have been doing something by now. It's still stuck in this welcome to Macintosh screen. So there may be something that we need to crack this open and have a look further to try and get it to uh, to boot. We can try booting off floppies. We can try a few different things, but uh, that'll be a topic for another video. Just wanted to see if it works. Uh, there's nothing majorly wrong. Obviously, we've got power to the motherboard. The screen's coming on, um, getting nothing else. But... Yeah, this would be another good candidate for some videos coming up. Great little machine. So, that's been a fun look at everything that's arrived lately here at the basement. I think I've managed to find a place for everything on the shelves. 
Now, if you have any ideas about what we can use this stuff for, maybe some future projects, ideas for videos, why don't you put that in the comments below? Especially that stuff that works fine, like what should we, what games should we put on there? What software should we put on there? How well is it gonna run that stuff? If you've got any of those ideas, I'd love to hear those ideas and um, we'll see if we can make that into a video. But uh, for right now, I'm gonna sign off. You've been in the basement, have a great week.